Hey guys, so today you and I are going to talk about switching roles. So let's get into it. So the question in question was, Frederick, if you already have a job, how do you change language, framework, technologies or similar without needing to apply to positions with significantly less seniority and pay? What I mean is, how do you develop your career to avoid being pegged in a specific role the entire time without needing to start your career all over? How did you switch from backend to frontend and did you need to take a pay cut? So this is an excellent question. Uh, I would say that I'll just give you my history uh, in terms of like switching roles and so forth. Uh, so when I first started my education, it was a fairly standard education. I went to a, a school like a uh, I, well, I went to school, I learned how to do Java programming um, primarily, like we did everything in Java uh, and then of course we did some stuff in JavaScript, so I mean let's say it was more or less a full stack type of education but the emphasis was very heavy on the back end work, right? Uh, and then I took my first job, which was a full stack developer job. I uh, worked there for a little while and then I transitioned into front end work. Um, and I actually got a pay increase there because the first job I had was at a very small agency or a, a, a fairly small agency. And then I went and worked for a fairly large corporation. And then I switched again to full stack work. Um, and so forth and uh, the pay was sort of the same and then I actually increased my pay a little while after that. So uh, the thing that I think that you should know about switching roles, it really comes down to this thing that I've said a few times before. Can you do the job? Or do you have the coding skills to actually do the job? Because the thing is that uh, the difference between the work that you do in say front end and in back end, well the core coding skills are sort of the same. In other words, if you can express logic through a programming language and you understand how programming languages work, then the rest of it really comes down to understanding, as the subscriber was mentioning, the framework and a lot of the surrounding technologies. And this is the thing that I have, uh, well, the, 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 this is touching on something that I have talked about before as well. The the difference when you have when you create a career strategy for yourself, right, between being very wide or broad in your technical knowledge, uh, jack of all trades, master of none type of person, versus being a specialist and go really deep on something very specific. There are pros and cons uh, with both. So there's no definitive way to say the one thing is better than the other. But if your ambition is to fairly seamlessly without a lot of, well, if let's say that you having to take a pay cut or going down in seniority levels or something like that, if you want to be able to make those types of switches in your career, it's very useful for you to be a more broad developer. Because move if, let's say for the sake of argument that you are a, die-hard uh, data scientist very deep into say machine learning well the the challenges that you face in that space is going to be different from let's say what a front-end developer does the tooling and like all the considerations they're very different so making a switch from one to the other it is absolutely possible but at the end of the day you have to ask yourself do you have the skills that are necessary so when i transition from a full stack developer's role to a front end developer well my i actually had front end developer skills i actually had the skills that i needed in order to do the, to do the job as a front end only developer now when i wanted to switch back to my back end role uh, or to, to a back end role uh, or sorry a full stack role the the time i spent as a front end developer well, of course that had an impact on how much time i had been exposed to the server side so i had to kind of relearn some stuff but my employer at the time was willing to overlook that and still hire me and things kind of went from there so it really does come down to that thing i was saying can you do the job and it really isn't uh, i know that it might feel strange to you 
uh, because a lot of people think about transitioning their career as this uh, in, in software development as this very big change but you have to think about it I, I think that you should think about it differently um, for a lot of people uh, making say a switch from say that you were a I don't know let's say that you've worked as a, a farmer and you want to go into finance well the differences between those two roles or vice versa that's pretty wide like there's a little big gap between those two so that's a big like, there's a big change in what you have to know and like a, almost a completely new skill set if that makes sense but for a software developer that transition is not as big a front-end developer will off, depending on the front-end developer of course will often know about some of the surrounding technologies that are related to say back-end developers role not, not of course everything but you will be adjacent enough that the transition may actually not be that hard for you now I'm not saying that that's always the case in some situations you have to also consider that the company might be looking for something very specific I'll give you an example uh, I do uh, very simple ops work as part of my job uh, which involves using Kubernetes and Docker and so forth and in, in this scenario GCP but I'm not a senior DevOps engineer or an operations person not at all like I understand the concepts and I understand how to do things but I'm still at a fairly junior level so if I were to go to a company uh, to to a company for an interview, it I, I it would be really weird for me to go in with the mindset that I'm going to get paid as a senior software developer or as a senior DevOps developer because it's simply not something that I've been doing. Uh, on the other hand, uh, since I've been working in the application development space with backend and frontend and so forth, uh, I can sort. I, I mean, I have the skills to to sell the idea or to to actually be applicable to switch between different languages and different stacks not because i know all the languages on the market or i know all this all the different uh, frameworks or so forth but because i've spent enough time with a few flavors of languages and a few frameworks different different types of stacks if that makes sense so that my employer feels comfortable comfortable hiring me even though i might have not been using their specific stuff i've been doing enough of the work so that they know that i will be able to do the job but i would not be able to do that if i went and did something very drastically different from what i've ever done before so what i want you to take away from this is that it is absolutely possible for you to switch your stack to switch your language or whatever it really comes down to if you have what I like to call the core coding skills because if you want to go from one language that is fairly similar to another language well then then the transition isn't all that difficult for you because it really only comes down to do you have the core skills that are necessary in order to adopt the differences between the thing that you're doing right now and the thing that you're gonna do that's really all it comes down to uh, a person who has worked in Java going over to C sharp uh, that transition should be feel fairly straightforward in many cases but let's say that you've only worked in Java and you want to go over to Haskell well that might be a very big change but you might be able to swing it it really comes down to that like it, that I've said this I'm sorry a hundred times now but it, it does need repeating can you do the job that's that's the only thing that matters and if you want to have this freedom to be able to fairly seamlessly switch between languages and so forth it really comes down to you having a career strategy that is oriented around learning a lot of different things versus being very specialized in one thing and the rest is really up to you if you want to make these sorts of transitions I have made this transition a few times uh, without having to take much of a peak uh, it hasn't really uh, impacted my career in a negative fashion but on the other hand uh, that is also because I chose I've chosen to be very wide in the skills that I have rather than to specialize in one very specific thing pros and cons I'm not applicable to do some of the most advanced stuff in the world but I'm a little bit more flexible and you have to decide for yourself which one you want to be have a great day